Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here. I'm today with kind of a special video. Now, it's kind of become this thing over the last day or so in the general anime community to talk about gatekeeping. Now, what triggered this was apparently someone made a tweet or a post on, I think it was first posted on Minds actually before it was put on Twitter, where a person said that if your entire knowledge of anime is limited to and he lists several, like, the bigger anime names, like Sailor Moon, Demon Slayer, Naruto, uh, Bleach, like, anime like that. If that's your entire knowledge base of anime, then you are not an anime fan. And what I've noticed is the general response from the community so far is more or less against this, saying, Oh, if you're into that, then yeah, 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 you're an anime fan. Well, I want to give my general take on it. It's a bit more nuanced, and it's a bit free form. So again, as you can probably tell already, I am not using a script for this video. I'm going completely free base here, you know, and I'm going full commando here. And uh, I'm just going to give you some of my thoughts regarding this topic. Now, the first thing is, if your knowledge of anime is in fact limited to just, you know, the basic big name titles, you know, I definitely wouldn't call you otaku. I probably wouldn't consider you like a weeb, but anime fan, that's a different, that's a different, that's a different way to look at it here, because if you phrase it as anime fan, that means like you're a fan of anime, that's a fan of like the general anime base, and I'm going to take the kind of unpopular answer here and say, if your knowledge of anime is entirely, and note the keyword here, entirely, based on just the big name anime like that, then I would honestly not necessarily consider you an anime fan. As you remember, this term fan is short for fanatic. That means like really into, really big into. Because honestly, I could talk to any person, mention some, like any person, like someone who's not someone I would consider like an anime fan. I can go talk to a person in their 20s who stayed away from anime and mention Naruto, mention Dragon Ball, and they'll at least have an idea of what I'm talking about. You know, and at the same time, that's where you draw the line. If you consider like what, like how much of these big name anime would you have to watch or be into to then be considered an anime fan? Now, would it be like watch every single episode, or just a few episodes, or to at least follow through an arc? Because, like I said, because there was a controversy not that long ago about some rapper, I forgot who, who mentioned Deku. From uh, My Hero Academia one time, and everyone's like, she's an anime fan, she's an anime fan. And then most people at the time were like, no, that does not automatically make an anime fan. You saw a picture of Deku crying that, wow, you're such otaku, you know. And I might be coming off snobbish, and I can see how someone would have that opinion based on what I've said here. But the same time is, is this gatekeeping? Gatekeeping is the general practice of guarding a fandom guarding a general interest from people who they don't seem as desirable. And the, the what I found interesting is how this, this was talked about with regards to this tweet regarding about whether or not you are an anime fan. I think this is the wrong argument, the wrong, uh, the wrong argument to have with regards to this. I don't consider tweets like that to be gatekeeping. Gatekeeping would be like, I don't believe, I don't like you, I don't like your certain beliefs, you're not a fan. I, I don't think that this was a case of gatekeeping. And I guess since I've mentioned gatekeeping, I gonna have to kind of go into that concept. It kind of become this thing. The general trend of the past decade or so in anime is against the concept of gatekeeping, where it's like, well, let everyone enjoy it. Let everyone enjoy it. And on its surface, that's a, that's a great idea. It's, it's a very libertarian, very free-form idea where people are like, well, if you enjoy it, let them enjoy it. Let them be part of the fan base. But then you get situations, and you get these case studies, where you can look into some of these fandoms, some of these very notorious fandoms, and notice how there's a number of people who are just straight-up cancerous. The, the first fan base, at least in recent memory, people will point out, is something like Steven Universe. Is Steven Universe a show that's evil? No, not at all. But you... You will go into these communities and you'll find a handful, not even a large number, but a very vocal, 
small handful of people who are like, like there was like that famous controversy where it was like they like fans of the show convinced a female artist to attempt suicide because she drew a character too skinny. And the question is, well, how do we prevent these people from being associated with our product, associated with the fan base? That's where I think gatekeeping does come in. So that's why I believe, to some degree, gatekeeping of a fandom is necessary. And again, and another thing, a fandom I'm actually a member of, Danganronpa, where there's become this very... Danganronpa has become... What Steven Universe was in, like, 2015 in terms of maximum cringe factor, that's what Danganronpa is now in 2020, 2021, which is kind of impressive considering that Danganronpa is also effectively a done franchise at this point. There has become this thing where, and I've pointed this out on Twitter, of all places, where it's like, you see these threads where someone's like, I'm gonna dox you, and then, like, post this personal, person's personal information, and almost every time, they have, like, a Kokichi... A profile picture, and I keep pointing out once again why are they always Dongan Rampa fans? And you go into the fan base, and I'm actually a member of a Discord server that's uh, full of Dongan Rampa fans. If they figure this out, they're probably going to kick me out or something. But you go into these communities, and of course, like most fandoms, most people are pretty awesome, pretty cool people. I have no qualms with them at all, you know. But there are some people. In these fan bases that are super extreme, super messed up, and will actually unironically dox you. And I saw this one example of a Dongan Rampa fan who doxed someone because they were not a fan of the shipping, and it's always shipping too. Never a fan of shipping, uh, what's their names again? Damn it. Of, uh, what's the two main g of Nagito and, not Makoto, and, uh, Hajime. See, you can tell I'm not doing this off a of script of Hajime and Nagito in the second Danganronpa game, which is admittedly kind of a pretty popular ship, but like this person didn't ship it. This one person got pissed off and posted all their personal information on a Discord. And by the way, it was not the Discord server I'm a member of, just to clear that one up. But again, and the question is, how can a fan base find a way to not have these very ugly, cancerous elements inside, you know? And the answer is a degree of gatekeeping, you know, because you have people who are like people if they're like, yeah, I like this. I like these characters. That's great. Let them in the fan base. The, the bigger the fan base, the better, the more interactions you get, the more interesting people you'll get to meet. But then again, you're going to meet some of these really ugly elements. And like I said, with the old standard of let people enjoy it, then you just let them in and. At the same time, that's going to overall have a deleterious impact on your fandom. Ask Steven Universe fans. They know this firsthand. And like I said, Danganronpa. And you can go back to all these different fan bases too, especially the past 15 years, especially since like the internet became really proliferated around, where you see people have these like experiences of like, yeah, I'm a fan of this, but I interacted with this one person and they were just batshit crazy, you know? So ultimately, you get to this point where I think a degree of gatekeeping is necessary. Now, back to the original post that talked about that brought up this argument. And you can notice from what I've been discussing the last few minutes or so, has absolutely no bearing on the initial tweet or comment. No. And that's why I said, at the same degree, I have a mixed opinion about the initial tweet that triggered all this. With if you're oh if you're only a fan if you're only aware of these big anime then you're not a true anime fan because I could definitely see that both ways and I think the like I said the general I think general at least uh, argument people are making was more the whole oh let them in oh no no and that's like oh no no they're they're fans at the same time though I mean you can easily draw a distinction between someone who's really into Echi. And I know some people who are unironically really into hentai. Like, I can draw very clear distinctions between the types of people and my co-workers, some of my co-workers who watched a couple episodes of Dragon Ball and were confused about why the hell is this black-haired kid so damn angry, you know. But again, that's just a few of my opinions, very mixed, messed up opinions. Again, completely off script here. What do you guys think? What's your opinions on gatekeeping in anime? I love reading your comments down below. 
And I appreciate your input. If you like this, if you want more free-form anime content like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am Super Orange Cat, and that is all.